on, do the hokey pokey. Come on, do the hokey pokey. Come on, you're not doing anything. Okay, uh, today I'm going to be installing a wall vault. Uh, I've been looking for one of these for a while, but never found one that I liked. Uh, this is finally one that I think is actually attractive enough to not have to hide it under a uh, picture or anything. I'm just going to leave it out in the open because I'm not using this as a way to secretly hide away my diamonds and my gold uh, from prying eyes. If I want to hide something from burglars, I'll think of a better way to hide it. Uh, this is just going to be a way to keep something at... Uh, ready access for me but keep it in a way that is secure for my kids and for many other unwanted visitors so I will be installing this in a spot in our TV room there's a place on the wall where there's a picture and a lamp right next to where I usually sit between the two couches and I think that would be a perfect place to install it like I said this one is attractive enough I don't feel the need to cover it in fact I think it looks kind of sci-fi it looks kind of like you have your own little replicator right there in your uh, family room now this kind of thing usually comes with a template, but I never trust templates. I always prefer to measure things myself. Now this is supposedly designed to go between uh, 16 inch on center studs. And it is 14 inches across. And it is 14 inches high. So it is a square. Now this is the part that will insert into the wall, so this is the part you will need to be cutting out for. Now remember, studs are 16 inches on center. Uh, now when you take that they're 16 inches on center, that does not mean they're 16 inches between each stud, because each stud is an inch and a half thick. So when you calculate the distance between the studs at 16 inch and a half center, you end up with 14 and a half inch empty space or dead space between the studs. So this 14 inch safe should fit in there perfectly. The little thing has little wings on the side that you can't see right now that can go in and out just a little bit when you're mounting it. So it should fit just perfectly. So now I just have to uh, cut out the spot on the wall. Okay, like I said, it's gonna go in that little space over there between that lamp and that mirror. Uh, like I said, I usually sit in that little corner right there between those two couches. So that's where I spend most of my time. So that'd be really easily accessible for me. And it's a good spot because it's also right across from my television, which I use as my computer. So that's where I'm at a great deal of the time. So putting it right there is a good idea to me because not only will it be quickly accessible to me but it's also in a place where I spend a great deal of my time if I'm in the house and I'm not asleep that's usually where I'm at okay right here's where I'm going to be installing the safe I have determined that this is a good spot for it. it's easily accessible uh, I've got room for it I'm, I'm able to make room for the door to drop you have to remember to make room for the door to drop you don't want furniture pushed up against it prevents the door from dropping so I've got that much I've got the right amount of space it's the right kind of wall and uh, so I'm ready to go. Now the first thing I'll need to do is locate my studs. Now I can use a stud finder. Now some of you people may not have a stud finder out there so you may be a little discouraged about trying to do a job like this. But in this case, I don't even have to use a stud finder because right straight down below from where I'm gonna do the installation there is an electrical outlet and a cable outlet. As you can see, they're right next to each other and they're 16 inches apart. So I know there has to be a stud for each one of these outlets. So I can just start, go right straight up and start from the middle and work my way out until I find a stud. Okay, since I know my studs are here and here because of the outlets down below, I just need to go up as far as I want to go up. And I'm going to go up enough to have the safe sitting and then have the room for the drop. So I just have to find my area, find a nice level line, and draw a line just across very lightly that would follow the space between those two studs. Okay, now that I have my level line here, I'm going to use my drywall saw to just cut across from stud to stud. And that'll be my first line, first cut, and then I'll measure out my box and cut it out. Now, if you don't have a drywall saw, there are only a few dollars at Home Depot or Lowe's, so they're not hard to come by. You didn't buy them at a lot of department stores and grocery stores. But if you can't find one, I have in a pinch before used a pencil to jab a hole and used a steak knife, and I have also in a bad situation before just drawn out my box and cut it out with a, uh, a box knife. But in this case, I'm going to use the, the uh, drywall saw. And you just start off by poking a hole. Now, I will add that I could use my Dremel to just zip, zip this right out. But because I don't know what's in this wall, I would rather not have any unexpected visits from power wires or water lines or anything like that. I would rather do it nice and slow and by hand. 
Okay, now that I have my line cut across, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the corners so that I can get an idea where the studs really are. Okay, now that I have the location of my studs uh, confirmed, I'm just going to use my level here to draw lines 14 inches down from each spot here. I've done it on the other side already. I just get it up with the top line, get it level. And I'll actually just be following the stud down more than anything else, but I still want a line. And I'll make this 14 inches. And I'll be following that line, and then I'll connect these two across once I get this cut down. And uh, since this is 14 and a quarter inches, this worked out to be 14 and a quarter inches across, which is perfect because you want an eighth of an inch play on both sides for the 14 inch box to fit into. Okay, now I just draw a straight line across, making sure it's totally level because this is going to be the bottom of my safe. This is what's going to determine whether the safe is set in here level or not. So I want to make sure this is the most level line in the bunch. And there we got it and I will cut that out. Okay, now one thing that I did know that would be a factor in this is that I knew there would be insulation in this wall. This wall is an exterior wall. It doesn't go to the outdoors, it goes to my garage. I chose it because even though it's an exterior wall, it's not a wall that's exposed to the elements on the other side. So as long as I tear out this insulation and I put in a thin backing layer of uh, felt insulation or uh, wool insulation, that'll be enough for this area. Like I say, there's not open weather on the other side of the wall. So that'll just be one more step I have to take care of. You may not have to take care of that in your installation, but I knew this going into it, so this is not a big deal. Okay, now I've taken the unit and I've just sat it in the hole. Uh, laid a piece of velvet behind, uh, 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 like a wool velvet insulation over the back of the safe, slid it in the hole. Uh, I'm going to spare you all the uh, pounding and shoving and cussing that it took to get it in there because there's these little screws on, each, on the sides of the case that make it just a hair wider than the space between the studs. So it just takes a little brute force to shove it in there. Once you shove it in there, it says to pull it, the mark the holes, pre-drill them and pull it back out and drill the holes, screw that, this is too much work to put this thing in and out of here. So I have just got it in securely, it is insulated behind it. I am just going to use the pre-programmed code, open it up, use some self-tapping screws here, put them in there, four screws self-tapping, won't split your uh, two by fours, won't hurt them at all. There's only one here, one here, one here, and one here. So just I'm going to zip those in there and this baby will be installed. Okay, the installation is complete. Uh, it has been bolted in all four bolts. Went in really easy. Uh, the hardest part was just getting the safe in the wall of all of it. And it does work now, so now I just gotta clean it up, get everything back where it goes, and this will be an operational wall safe. Okay, it is installed. There it is over on the wall. Uh, it looks really nice in the room. I think it uh, doesn't need to be covered at all. And if I ever decide to cover it later, I can always put a triptych painting there and cover it up. But I like the looks of it. In fact, uh, I'm kind of tempted to walk up to it and say, Earl Grey, hot. Okay, I'll give you a short demonstration of it opening here. Uh, now this is the pre-programmed manufacturer's code. My code will of course be shorter and easier to do, but the pre-programmed one is just one, two, three, four, and boom. There you go, and there you have access to whatever you want to store in it. I personally have a car K40 stored in it now, and I will probably also put a flashlight and some other items in there. Uh, but that is the installation of the safe, and that is what it looks like when it's done. From start to finish, probably took a total of 30 to 35 minutes. So we're talking a very quick installation. It looks really good. And for the price, I mean, what I paid for this, I could have, I would have easily expected to pay three, maybe even four times what I paid for this safe. I'll put a link in the bottom so you can go check them out yourself. Uh, but like I say, it's uh, Secure Logic, I do believe is the name brand, Secure Logic Wall Vault. Very easy installation and seems to be working pretty well so far. I'll do a review on it later to see how it holds up. But that's the installation and that's the finished product. I'll just be following the stud mostly, but I want to get an idea of where my...